my first book is one of my favorites. It's Pete the Cat and His Four Groovy Buttons. And I'm going to need some of your help to help keep the beat with snapping or clapping or maybe patting our legs for that one too. My next one is called Not Your Typical Dragon. It's one of my favorites too. I discovered it through um, Dolly Parton's Imagination Library of uh, books when I was living in Tennessee before. And that's an amazing organization, um, but there's some really good books in there. And this one is one of my favorites. And my last one is Dear Zoo, which is perfect for our little, little ones. Um, it's simple, but it's super cute too. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start with Pete the Cat, and that is, has art by Jane Steen and the story by Eric Litwin. Let's get started. Pete the Cat. Pete the Cat put on his favorite shirt with four big, colorful, round, groovy buttons. He loved his buttons so much, he sang this song. My buttons, my buttons, my four groovy buttons. My buttons, my buttons, my four groovy buttons. Oh no! One of the buttons popped off and rolled away. How many are left? Three! Four minus one equals three! See? Let's count them. One, two, three buttons. Did Pete cry? Goodness no. Buttons come and buttons go. He kept on singing his song. My buttons, my buttons, my three groovy buttons, my buttons, my buttons, my three groovy buttons. Let's see what happens next. <gasps> Pop! Oh no! Another button popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? Let's see. <gasps> Two buttons. Three minus one equals two. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no. Buttons come and buttons go. He kept on singing his song. My buttons, my buttons, my two groovy buttons. My buttons, my buttons, my four, my two groovy buttons. <gasps> oh, it looks like he's eating some ice cream. I wonder what's gonna happen next. Oh no. <gasps> Oh no! Another button popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? One! Two minus one equals one. Did Pete cry? Goodness no! Buttons come and buttons go. He kept on singing his song. My button, my button, my one groovy button, my button, my button, my one groovy button. <gasps> Pop! Oh no! The last button popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? Let's see. Zero, one, minus one, equals one. Zero, no buttons. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no. Buttons come and buttons go. Pete looked down at his buttonless shirt, and guess what he saw? He saw his belly button! And he kept on singing his song. Show me your belly button, right here. All right, let's sing it. My button, my button. Still have my belly button, my button. My button. Still have my belly button. It's all good, Pete says. I guess it simply goes to show that stuff will come and stuff will go. But do we cry? Goodness, no. We keep on singing. See, he's got his four buttons, but they're popped off, but he still has them. Buttons come and buttons go. The end. I love that one. I like a really cool song. Um, next, we're gonna read Not Your Typical Dragon. And this is the one that I got in my Dolly Parton Imagination Library uh, box when I was up in Tennessee. Um, this one's by Dan Barrell and illustrated by Tim Bowers. See, here's our little dragon. His name is Crispin. He's who our story's about. 
not your typical dragon. Crispin Blaze was born into a proud family of fire-breathing dragons. Every blaze breathes fire, explained his father. I breathe fire, your mother breathes fire, and tomorrow, when you turn seven, you will breathe fire too. See all those dragons? There's a long line of fire breathers in his family. The little dragon imagined all of the forests that he would burn down. He dreamed of all the castles he would destroy. And he also considered boiling water to make tea, but he didn't tell his father that. The next day, Crispin sat among family and friends as a big cake was brought to the table. Who will light the birthday candles, his mother asked. I will, declared Crispin. He could feel a tingling inside his tummy. But when he opened his mouth, he fire did not come out. <gasps> Whipped cream came out! Crispin, shouted his father, dragons breathe fire. What will the neighbors think, worried his mother. I love whipped cream, said his little sister, Ashley. The little dragon was whisked off to the doctor the very next day. Please fix my son, demanded Crispin's father. What seemed to be the problem, asked the doctor. Crispin opened his mouth and breathed, but fire did not come out. Band-Aids came out. Oh, my goodness. I see, said the doctor gravely. Dragons should breathe fire, insisted Crispin's father. We were low on Band-Aids, mumbled the nurse. The doctor sent Crispin home with medicine. He swallowed two teaspoons before going to school. It will help you become a real dragon, said his father with a wink. After school, Crispin joined his first fire-breathing class. One by one, Little dragons aimed their fiery breath at stacks of logs until they burst into flames. Crispin stepped up confidently. He could feel the medicine bubbling in his belly, but when he opened his mouth, fire did not come out. Marshmallows came out! Oh my goodness! Dragons breathe fire, yelled the coach. Isn't that right, class? The other dragons didn't answer. They were too busy looking for pointing sticks, pointy sticks for marshmallow roasting. I guess I'm not a real dragon, Crispin thought. He worried that his family would be disappointed. So he ran away from home. Oh no, packed his little dragon bag and everything. The world can be a scary place for a little dragon who can't breathe fire. Crispin found a dark cave. I'll be a fireless dragon all by myself. I won't bother anyone and no one will bother me. An hour later, he had a visitor. I am Sir George, squeaked a thin, shiny knight. Sh -sh Show yourself, dragon. Crispin shuffled out of the cave. The thin, shiny knight held up his thin, shiny sword. D -d Do your worst, dragon. Crispin opened his mouth, but fire did not come out. Oh no, let's see. came out! Oh my goodness! Soap bubbles came out. Don't you breathe fire, dragon? Crispin shook his head. I can't, Sir George moaned, but my father insists that I fight a fire-breathing dragon. It even says here in my book that your typical dragon breathes fire. Well, I'm not your typical dragon, Crispin explained. I'm, well, Sir George sighed. I can't go home. Me neither, Crispin nodded. But then he had an idea. Maybe your book could tell us what to do. Of course, Sir George searched through the pages. It says probably it's just your diet. Sir George fed Crispin spicy curry, scorching chili, and blistering salsa. Crispin opened his mouth, but fire did not come out. Red party streamers came out. At least they're the right color, said Sir George kindly. Sir George searched through the book again. Aha! Uh -huh. It says it's probably just your attitude. Sir George showed Crispin how to look mean and angry enough to breathe fire. Crispin opened his mouth, but fire did not come out. Soft teddy bears came out. Hmm, said Sir George. We may have taken a step backwards. 
It's no use, Kristen sighed. I'm just not your typical dragon. Look at all those teddy bears. That's so silly. Well. But Sir George was not ready to give up. Aha! The book says you are too stressed. Sir George made Crispin close his eyes while he described a quiet, relaxing day at the ocean. Do you feel calm? Now imagine a hundred shiny knights attacking you! Crispin opened his mouth, but fire did not come out. Beach balls came out! Well, that's just plain weird, said Sir George. Secretly, Sir George was glad that Crispin couldn't breathe fire. He liked the little dragon and didn't, didn't want to have to fight him. Crispin liked the shiny knight, too, but he missed his parents. Sir George, it's, it's getting dark. I want to go home. The shiny knight patted him on the back. Don't worry, little dragon. I will take you. Crispin's parents were relieved when he arrived home safely. Sir George was about to say goodbye when they heard a shout. There you are, boy! Why on earth are you playing with a fire-breathing dragon? He's my friend, Father, whispered Sir George. And besides, he doesn't breathe fire. A dragon that doesn't breathe fire? That's the silliest thing I've ever heard, the shiny man laughed. Crispin's father stormed out of the house. My son is not silly. He may not breathe fire, but I certainly can. Crispin's father let out a powerful spray of flames. Oh my goodness. He's pretty upset. Do your worst, dragon, declared the shiny man. But then the flames scorched the lawn. That's enough, honey, said Crispin's mother. The flames singed the fence. You've made your point, dear. Now stop showing off, she scolded. Then the flames ignited the roof. Crispin's father panicked. I can't stop breathing fire. You'll burn our house down, cried his mother. You'll burn down the whole neighborhood. Dragons came running from all directions. They knew how to start fires, but no one knew how to stop them. Crispin suddenly felt a tingling in his tummy. He felt a bubbling in his belly, but fire did not come out. A gush of water shot out. Crispin aimed the water right at his father's flames. He saved his home, and he even saved the shiny man, who wasn't looking so shiny anymore. Hooray for Crispin, everyone shouted. He's able to put the fire out. Yay. On Crispin's next birthday, there was a big party. Family and friends came from all over the land. Sir George and his family came, too. Lots of dragons were dancing. Crispin stood with his mouth open wide. Fire still did not come out. But music came out instead. Your son, said an uncle to Crispin's father. He's not your typical dragon, is he? No, replied Crispin's father proudly. My son is something special. And then he jumped up and danced to Crispin's music too. The end. I love that story. I love how Crispin always knew exactly what everybody needed. And he didn't, he wanted to breathe fire, but that wasn't what everybody else needed. He saved the day, and I love that story. All right, we have our last book coming up. It's called Dear Zoo, and it's by Rod Campbell. I wrote to the zoo to send me a pet. They sent me an elephant. Oh, can you show me your trunk? That's my best elephant noise. What's yours sound like? Mine sounds like this. But he was too big. I sent him back. So, they sent me a <gasps> giraffe. Oh, can you show me your long neck? Oh my goodness, my neck's so long that it doesn't even fit in the screen. <gasps> oh, but he was too tall. I sent him back. Oh no, it'd be cool to have a pet giraffe though. So, they sent me a <gasps> Lion. Rawr. Oh no, he looks pretty scary. Well, I don't know if I'd want to have him as a pet. He was too fierce. I sent him back. So they sent me a <gasps> camel. Oh, that camel looks pretty angry. It looks like he's pouting a little bit. Can you show me your best pouting face? You pout like this? 
Don't do this while we're stuck inside. There's no reason to pout. Don't be the grumpy camel. All right. He was too grumpy. I sent him back. You don't need any grumpy camels right now. <laughs> so they sent me a snake. Show me your snake. He was too scary. I sent him back. I'm with this guy. I don't want a snake in my house either. That's pretty spooky. All right. Let's see what they send this time. So they sent me a monkey. <laughs> oh, that would be pretty fun. But he was too naughty. I sent him back. I guess having a monkey, they can be kind of sneaky sometimes. So they sent me a <gasps> frog. Ribbit. 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 Oh my goodness. Can you show me a hop like your frog? Hop like a frog. You can do it. Hop, hop, hop. He was too jumpy. I sent him back. So they thought very, very hard and they sent me a <gasps> puppy. Woof, woof, woof. Can you wag your tail like a puppy? Woof, woof, woof. He was perfect, and I kept him. The end. Wow, those are such fun books, and it was so much fun to get to read with you guys. I feel better just getting out on my porch and just getting some fresh air and reading some stories. So I encourage you to keep tuning in to all of the other people that are going to be reading stories over the next couple of weeks. Uh, stay safe and stay healthy and have a wonderful night. Thanks, guys.